Hey y'all, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up divas, what's up divas, what's up everybody, what's up, what's up, welcome back, welcome back, y'all already know what time it is, it's Real Talk Diva time, Real Talk Devo time, it's just Real Talk Wednesday, what's up you guys, happy late Memorial Day, cause it's, it's actually Monday, so I hope y'all have like had, I hope y'all had like a great three day weekend, for those of you who had a three day weekend, you know what I'm saying, I hope you all had like a great weekend, I don't care how many days y'all had, I hope y'all all had like a great weekend, great day, whenever you watching this being blessed staying safe what's up you guys hope y'all having like an amazing day like from the heart you guys what's up so i'm happy to be back i ain't go nowhere but you know what i'm saying i love doing my real talk videos girl because you know what it's just about being yourself chilling relaxing i could kick back my shoes i could i could curse if i want to you know what i'm saying i try to be professional on other videos but girl this is real talk this is me okay so we just be me here okay so i hope y'all doing well i'm great you know what i'm saying even though i don't leave the house to work y'all you know what i'm saying I am an employed person like I'm self-employed you know what I'm saying I have a business and YouTube is part of my business like you know what I'm saying some people might not feel that way that leave the house to go to work or whatever or who have to answer to somebody but honey this is a business and I take it as such I work like I'm at a place of business okay so even though it is a holiday today I really was going to treat it as such and be like, you know what? You're going to have a three day weekend, but your girl, your girl can't sit still for nothing. Like I've, I've been doing good though. And I just felt like, you know what? I'm not about to do my real talk on no Tuesday because I need to be prepared. I like to be prepared and I like to have things done. And that's just me. And I'm going to treat today as if some people don't have off. So, you know, I work five days out the week. Okay. Until like six 30, six, seven o'clock at night. So, you know, on the weekends I have made it my business. Like I told y'all to not work anymore. Like I seriously, made it my point like normally I used to do like six videos on a Saturday and not have any time to myself or Sunday and I made it my business not to do that anymore I would do my videos throughout the week you know I had to get back in the mindset like girl you need to do your videos more than one day all at once because it doesn't work like that so I do maybe like two or three two you know what I'm saying two or three times a week and that's what it is and on the weekends you know I have I have made it my business to sit my fat ass on the couch and watch TV and I do things that I like to do like I like doing videos and I like editing but that's that's not the same as liking to relax so I like to do things I like to color I like to make bracelets and jewelry so that's what I've been doing on the weekends plus you know what let me tell you so you know when you have like um Roku TV I don't know it just shows you what other apps you have on your television so I kept seeing this one app I didn't this one advertisement um the downfall of Diddy and I kept seeing it and I was like I ain't watching that shit I ain't watching that shit so I ended up watching it on Saturday and I didn't really watch it watch it you know what I'm saying because I don't really sit still but I watched some of it and right after it went off Empire came on Empire from season one and I'm like, what the hell channel, streaming channel am I watching? Girl, I was watching Tubi. Now, I had put Tubi on my television, but I, I didn't really know it was like kicking like that. Like, I didn't really know like you was getting like good stuff. Now, mind you, I, I haven't watched Empire since probably like eight years now, eight years ago. And I think I only got up to like season two or three. Me and Tati used to watch that show faithfully, religiously, but it started getting whack, so we stopped. So I said, you know what? I got me a new show to watch here. I'm a, so I sat and I watched that season one on Saturday, maybe some bracelets, and um, that's what I did. Now, Sunday, I took my ass into the kitchen, okay? And I still made bracelets, but I made some ribs, okay? Girl, the ribs were so good, they fell off the bone. When I tell you they fell off the bone, I had to be delicate I had to be extra careful I had to be cautious when I was putting a barbecue sauce on to put it back in the oven because when I tell you them things was falling off the bone they was falling off the bone and then I brought some over there to my pregnant daughter-in-law she texted me and was like is this what heaven tastes like I said what the heck yes I love good compliments I love a good compliment so that's what I did what you doing in the box what you, there's nothing in the box for you there's there's nothing in the box for you there's there's nothing in there there's nothing in that box for you so yeah i know it yeah i know it i love you too i love you too i do i love you too so i did that now let me tell y'all about the concert last week okay because we we went to the bryson tiller bryson tiller what however you say that to his name okay we went to that concert me and tati okay now mind you before I even get into that, remember I told y'all I was waiting for my ponytail to come, okay? Girl, please tell me why. And remember, 
I had already sent a ponytail back, all right? I had already took a ponytail back that, that Monday, returned one, and got my money back, back into, that quick, okay? Returned to the Coles and got my money back. Now, y'all, to I told y'all I got me a new ponytail for the concert, I was waiting for it to come. It came like about six o'clock, the concert started at eight. So, girl, <laughs> That ponytail went back on Tuesday. That ponytail wasn't that ponytail wasn't cutting it either. I had to put on my own old ponytail. When I tell you I returned four ponytails this past week to Amazon, when I tell y'all I returned four, I returned four. Now here's the thing. I love Amazon. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, but I hate fake ass advertisement. And that goes with Amazon, that goes with wig companies. I hate when they use somebody else's picture and add, use it as their advertisement. And then when you get the product, it is not what it was supposed to be. Okay? When I tell you those ponytails were so dark, I had to, I kept one of them, but I returned four, okay? That's how much I was returning them. I wasn't playing. I kept one, and this is the one that I kept. Now, this ain't the one that I wore to the concert, but I had to put in some 40, 30 developer in this, on this. I didn't put bleach. I just put developer. I put 40 developer on it and had it sit for like two, three hours. When I tell you it lifted very little, like you could barely even notice it because it was too dark. And that's the one thing I don't like about getting ponytails sometimes from Amazon. They be too dark. It's like my hair is not that dark and y'all are using fake advertising. They'll use, you'll see like several different companies using the same fucking picture. Like, oh, so that girl wear that ponytail for y'all too? I had to turn back four ponytails. I changed my outfit like um, for the concert. I changed my outfit like three times because I was very undecided what I was going to wear. But I ended up looking really cute, okay? Me and Tati ended up looking really, really cute. Now, let me tell you about the concert. Now, mind you, I, I am not like a Bryson Tiller fan, okay? Y'all, let's, let's get this straight. Y'all know I am 49 years old. Nothing wrong with being 49 and loving Bryson Tiller. But he don't really need to put out no music that I'm interested in. Now, I probably got like two or three songs at best on my phone, on my playlist, okay? And I'm just being for real. It is what it is, right? But... Tati loved him. Tati loved his music. And Tati had never been to a concert before, except for um, high school musical concert that I took her and my daughter to. And I don't really consider that to be a concert. I consider that to be a play. But that was a long time ago. So anyway, I was there with her. We was chilling. Now, mind you, when we got there, it, I told you I was like a little venue. So we had that park across the street, which wasn't bad. We parked in a parking garage. It was $20. No big deal. Now, you know, I don't really like to drive at night because my vision, like I wear glasses and I'm nearsighted and farsighted. So a bitch can't see something times okay so i told tati she to drive okay and i'm gonna just sit on the passenger side so we at the concert and when we walk in now mind you it wasn't like a long wait we walk in and i'm seeing like all these younger people nothing wrong with that i love younger people as long as they can act right we get in it's like for one the seating the seats at concerts are not big girl friendly and i'm gonna just be honest because this is not the first time that i have felt this way i have felt this way at the beyonce concert and i was like well god damn if i was any bigger i wouldn't be sitting in these seats and that's how I felt about that. I felt that way at the Janet Jackson concert, the Jodeci concert, the SWV concert last year. I felt this way. So this place was a little bit, well, it wasn't a little bit. It was a lot, it was a lot smaller than where Beyonce would have opened up at. And honestly, it kind of seemed like it was smaller than where Janet Jackson was at. So, and it was, it, Janet Jackson was an outdoor concert place, an outdoor stadium. So anyway, we get in there, we find our seats, okay? And I'm looking around and you know, because I, I, I'm looking around. We, we there. We there at 8 o'clock, okay? And now there's a DJ, a guest DJ on the stage. I guess he's the opening act for Bryson Teller. Now, he been there before 8 o'clock. He been there since 7, okay? Like 7 something. So he was the opening act. So Bryson Teller was supposed to come on at 8 o'clock, okay? Okay. So me and Tati looking around, and why did we both look at each other at the same time and was like, and this is us all the time, I feel old being here. We both said that. We felt old being here. Now, mind you, Tati is in her 20s. She's 28. So we um we looking around, and the DJ, he's, he's playing. Ain't no opening act but the DJ. Like, you ain't got nobody coming on singing before Bryson. You ain't got nobody coming on dancing, doing no magic acts. It's none of that. It's the DJ. He's the opening act okay now he was pretty good and he was playing all the new trending music okay but i don't know how many fucking times this dude said are y'all ready for him you ready for me to bring bryson out he just said this shit like 10 times dude you said that for an hour and 30 minutes fucking straight okay when i tell you that dude did not come out onto the stage until like 9 20 okay i was like you got to be fucking kidding me you supposed to been out there 
your your entourage, your DJ opening act and said this shit like 10 times. Each time you trying to gaslight everybody and gas everybody to fuck up when he ain't even come out, okay? When I tell you when he did finally come out, he had on his jacket that was like, it was lit up. The jacket had lights all in it, okay? That's cool. He looked like a Roblox kind of character, whatever. I really wasn't there for it. But when I tell you that this motherfucker had this... This, this was like there was he when I say his jacket was light up, lit up it wasn't the only fucking thing that was lit up the stage was lit up he had all these lights blinking in the back then there was this big ass um stream like it was like a, a strip of lights right at the top and it was when I say it was a strip I didn't mean like a strip like that like the, the shit was probably like this it was wide it was like probably like two feet wide this strip of light and God knows how long it was. Okay. But it was filling the stage. When I tell you, he probably used the brightest bulb in the fucking world to flash in our goddamn pupils over and over and over and over and over again. When I tell you my eyes started, my pupils started burning and I started catching a migraine. I couldn't even look at the stage anymore because it was all these fucking lights. It just nonstop flashing. I had to put my head down because it was fucking up my vision and it was giving me a migraine and it was just, it was, I felt, I started feeling fucked up. I had to sit down. And not only that, but the music was so loud and it didn't seem like it was tuned properly. It was vibrating so bad. Tati sat down. Girl, I had to keep my head down for this concert. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just play this game, this word game on my phone because I couldn't look up anymore because the lights was nonstop. Like, when I tell you, people living on Mars could see how bright that fucking light was. People on Mars could see how bright that light was. Like, yo, if you had any type of epilepsy or whatever you was going to catch a seizure at that concert. Like, straight up, no lie. You was catching one. He was non-stop blinking all type of lights from the top to the backstage to the background to the sides. It was, like, overkill. And when I tell you, me and Tati, she seen me on my phone and she was like, are you over this? And I was like, I'm ready to leave whenever you are because I, I wanted to be the support. She was like, let's go. We left before it was even over. She, when, she, when we left out, she was like, I'm never coming back to a concert again. She, she didn't know what to expect. She didn't like it. She said there was too much flashing lights the, the vibration of the music was giving her a headache and it was starting to make her ear her was hurting her eardrums she said it was hurting her ear and it was just not exactly what she expected when i tell you we got all the way up to the top of the parking lot and when we when we got out the parking lot we seen the crowd of people coming out like it was over like so you mean to tell me your dj your open act dj performed longer than you did yo this dude was like an hour and a half almost late and he performed i kid you not for probably like 30 minutes maybe 40 45 when i tell you i was like oh my god so over so over so over this that was a horrible experience okay like when she asked me was beyonce's concert like that i was like no beyonce's concert did not have all those flashing lights like that it didn't it wasn't it was it, you can look at the stage in comfort okay this concert listen he was trying to send us in this come type of seizures okay when i tell you i will never go to another young people concert again i won't now mind you meg the stallion concert that's on my birthday guess what tati bought me those tickets for my birthday and it was a surprise she didn't even want to go it she didn't even want to go so we ended up giving the tickets to mumsy and nay to go so my two younger daughters are going because i don't like I know Meg Thee Stallion maybe more than I know Bryson Tiller, but I ain't got that many songs of hers on my playlist neither, okay? And I just don't listen. At my age, I'm listening. <laughs> I need the concerts like Janet Jackson. She'll be back, but I'm not about to go see her for a second time. Um, who I do want to go see is Ice Cube. He come here October 19th, and he bring in Bone Thugs and Harmony. He got um, Genuine. He got some other old-time school, old-school Art, artists like listen that'd be my kind of jazz that kind, that's my type of vibe okay i have realized that now beyonce is for all age groups so that concert was decent janet jackson you know people like my age group was there and i and i was feeling it swv joe C, and drew hill that was my age group so you know that concert was that i was feeling that you know what i'm saying so i need to be somewhere where they done been out for a couple of decades for me to enjoy myself because I'm pretty sure they will not be trying to blind a bitch. They, when I tell you that concert, he tried to blind motherfuckers. He tried to blind people at that concert. I was so glad to go home. So glad to go home. I, I, I really was like, damn. And when I looked around at the entire venue in the, in the, in the dress code, I was like, did I, oh, I kept saying this idea. Did I overdress? Did I overdress? All I had on was a denim dress, but I was put together. People look like they had rolled out of bed. Some people. 
And I said, okay, you know what? This is definitely not for me. This is this is not for me, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I enjoyed my time with Tati and that's all that mattered. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm gonna keep away from these young artist concerts because they definitely not for me. Now let's get on to my doctor's appointment. Okay, so I had to go to the doctor's uh, last week to the vein doctor, girl, yes. Get my checkup. Girl. Now, I thought it was just me feeling this way, and I know it's not really a lot of pounds, but I did feel like, you know how you can always tell you lose a few pounds? I lost four pounds, and I'm happy about that, okay? I knew I felt a little lighter, but I did stop eating at night. I stopped eating at night, um, and I felt... I don't know. I just wasn't in the mood to eat dinner for the past week. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I had ate lunch for the past week. I've been not eating dinner and it's not that I'm doing it on purpose, but I just wasn't in the mood. I haven't been in the mood to eat like that. And I don't know what's going on, but I feel fine once I eat lunch and I'm full and I'm like, you know what? If I'm not hungry, I'm just not going to eat anything. And so I guess that's how I've been losing the weight. But also I've been noticing that it doesn't matter what type of meat it is, but every time I've been eating meat, like I don't really eat a lot of beef um, at all, but it could be chicken or um, it could be like cold cuts or last night I had made my ribs. Remember I made the ribs. It just messes my stomach up, okay? Any type of meat that I've been eating, it's messing my stomach up. It's messing with me and girl, when I tell you, I'm like, I'm just not gonna eat any meat because it's been messing my stomach up and you know once your stomach is messed up, you gotta use the bathroom. So I don't know what it is, but it's even chicken now. And I, I've been seeing all these different things about how some of these meats are fake. It's not really chicken like we've been thinking. I don't know if that's the reason why my stomach has been really messed up the way it has been. But girl, when I tell you that any type of meat that I've been eating, except for like salmon like fish I'm fine but when it comes to even chicken you know what I'm saying messing my stomach up so I've lost four pounds and I'm happy about that okay now can a girl keep losing more I'll be even more happier okay yes I'll be even more happier but this coming Saturday this coming Saturday June 1st at 2 30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time is okay so if you live on the east coast that'll be 4 30 it's going to be the virtual live baby shower so we're going to be doing the baby shower this coming saturday at 2 30 i'm gonna tell my daughter-in-law at 2 because she always seemed to be late for shit so we're going to do it at 2 30 now i'm going to decorate you know it's it's going to be it's going to be a live virtual baby shower so it's not going to be like people here except for the people that live here okay um, we're not making refreshments because there's nobody there but us there and I couldn't I couldn't offer you guys anything through the screen but you know bring your own refreshments so this coming Saturday June 1st at 2 30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time will be the live baby shower okay so we're gonna be doing it live and it'll be right here where you watching this video at okay so thank you to everyone who has sent so many amazing and lovely gifts I thank you so much I'm still gonna instill and put the I'm still going to put the this, I'm still going to put the Amazon baby registry link in this, this video also. So if you haven't purchased your gift and you would love to purchase one for the baby shower, girl, here is your chance to do so. Even if the gift does not come in time for the baby shower, I will still make sure to mention you in the baby shower live because I do get the notices. So if you want to purchase something for the baby shower, go ahead. The link is going to be in the description box. We would love for you all to show up. And if you cannot come, that's fine. You can also watch the recap and leave your comments as well i have not done a live in like a year so i'm a little bit nervous okay so you know i don't know i don't know why i'd be so nervous but i just do um i then i wish i would have had like a baby shower chair but i'm not gonna go out and buy one just for that but we're gonna use like an office chair that tati just purchased it's a nice wide one and i'm gonna do my best to decorate that so we're gonna do that i'm gonna use what i have okay but i am gonna go get some decorations like i did for baby um potatoes baby shower and we're gonna make it look nice okay so yes please be there if you can if you cannot i appreciate you guys watching in the recap but i want to just say thank you to everyone who has sent gifts we are so grateful and appreciative and we are so ready for this baby shower so she can take this stuff and get it out of my house okay but also if you want to purchase something for the baby shower you can go ahead and do so i will link it down below so i'm really really excited about that other than that we have a sponsor for today's video and y'all already know who i love to showcase and my real talks because they have some amazing amazing items which is dossier dossier okay perfume all right now if i have never mentioned or you guys do not know what dossier perfume is let me just tell you guys they are an amazing monthly subscription where you can either use your subscription for that month or you can let it stack up but they have inspired 
perfume scents, okay? Inspired scents. Now, when I say inspired, some people might want to call it replicas or knockoffs. We're going to call them inspired scents, okay? Because they are inspired by that particular scent. And their prices are amazing. And when I tell you, like, in my own perfume collection, I have the real authentic ones and I have the inspired scents by Dossier. And when I tell you that they smell like 90% dead smack on, they are dead smack on, okay? They are amazing brand and I absolutely love them. And they also do have have their own scents now which are great they also do have household um, smell scents also so definitely want to check them out so this time around I have four of their scents and I've been trying them out for the past few days I sprayed them this time on the actual inspire scent stock cards so that way I don't have to smell like a Jezebel okay so they did send me four I was I was able to pick them out but the first one I want to show you guys is their own inspired scents this is their own scent I need to try something of theirs now when I tell you once I opened up this box it smells so good because I like I said I sprayed everything on the cards and this is their speakeasy collection okay and that's what they're calling it their speakeasy collection okay so this one i have here is the bubbly spritz and bitters okay now when i tell you this perfume smells amazing i don't know anything or anything that i could familiarize it with but just amazing okay it smells amazing it's called bubbly spritz and bitters and about this perfume the perfect harmony struck between bitter and sweet in the spritz cocktail one spritz will delight your senses with all the vibrant sensations of laying beachside on the italian riviera so this is what this scent is inspired by it has like a clean refreshing scent it's like a it's like a clean scent it's very clean but it has like a refreshing scent. Now, this is something that you can definitely wear all the time. It's not too heavy. You know how you have some perfumes that are very, very noticeable and heavy? This one is noticeable, but it's like a clean scent. It's like a very light, heavy scent, if I can explain it right. But So if you love Dossier, try out their Bubbly Spritz and Bitters. Now, I don't know what the name is about, but try out Bubbly Spritz and Bitters, okay? For, for sure, by their brand. This one is a definite, you know what I'm saying? This one is definitely a definite. They all do come in these boxes, and you also have a card inside, which tells you what the scent is inspired by and what it, the ingredient. Now, here we go. This is a bigger box because there are some perfumes that have different sizes, okay? Now, the monthly subscription is $29 a month, if I'm correct. So that way, if you don't want to use your your credits for that month, you can also stack your credits up. Now, this one right here is called Ambery Saffron. Ambery Saffron, okay? And this is inspired by Mason Francis Carduccian, I think. Look, girl, I don't speak foreign languages, okay? But this is the Baccarat Rouge 540. So this is inspired by the Baccarat Rouge 540 Eau de Parfum by Maison, Maison Francis. So, yeah, girl, okay? Yeah. And this one here, I'm going to spray it again because um, I don't smell it. But this bottle is huge, okay? This is a huge bottle. And what I like about these, they have magnetic tops. So we're going to let that sit for a second and we're going to come back to it. That is Ambery Saffron. Now the next one we got is Citrus Green Apples. And this one is inspired by one of my faves, which is Dolce & Gabbana. Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue for Women, okay? So I had this perfume like a while ago and it does smell really, really good, girl, okay? And so I was like, you know what? I don't have it anymore, all right? And I wasn't trying to spend no money either like that. But, mm. You can still smell it a little bit on the actual stock car. Like, you have ever smelled Dolce and Cabana's light blue for women? Girl, then you know what I'm talking about. Get this. This one is called the Citrus Green Apple by Dossier. And this one smells like just this one to me. <laughs> now, you know how you got to let some perfume sit for a minute because they start to smell really strong? Yeah, girl, that's how that one smells. So, I'm going to let it sit. So, as, as for Ambery Saffron. It has like this very low key smell. This is what it reminds me of. Low key, not too potent. You know, you know how you want to be noticed, but you don't really want to be noticed. You want to smell good, but you don't want to smell overpowering. This is what that's giving me. It's giving me like low key scent. I think like some perfumes I really feel like are for both. And because it smells so low key, I'm just going to spray it on myself. Okay. So it smells like to me, it gives me like low key vibes. And I like that because sometimes I don't want to smell like a Jezebel. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know the word Jezebel when we was younger, how the, uh, my mother used to use that word a lot, Jezebel. 
but it has like a low key smell. Like it's there, you can smell it. It's low key, but it smells like divine. It's like some kind of classy, easy kind of smell. You know what I'm saying? Like a laid back chill vibe. That's the that's that's what it's giving and making me feel. Now, as for the citrus green apple, which is inspired by Dolce and Cabana, girl, get this one. Get this one. This one. It reminds me of love. Like, you know how you want to smell real good for your man? And you always have, like, that special perfume that's just for him because he always tells you, like, he loves the scent of it? This is what I would do with this perfume. Like, I seriously feel that way about this perfume. Like, it has, like, a smell that you always going to smell good. No matter if it's, like, a bad day, this is, this is how I feel about this perfume. And it's definitely a dead smack on, like, 95.99%. Dolce and come on this smells so amazing so I would definitely 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 suggest citrus green apple and ambery saffron like if you want higher more potent perfume the ambery saffron might not be for you but it's a very low-key vibe it gives you like very low-key um I want to smell good and I do smell good but I I'm low-key smelling good like if you shy the ambery saffron is for you it's like a shy scent you know what i'm saying like it's not overpowering and some people don't like that overpowering and that's fine and now the last one the last but not least is a fruity brown sugar fruity brown sugar okay i don't know why i'm saying it like that because i really want to say i want some of your brown sugar Ooh. i really want to say that okay that's why i'm like yeah you y'all know what song that is so this one is inspired by it's saint laurent it's saint laurent okay mon pari mon pari eau de perfume now listen it's saint laurent be having like some really potent perfume i have a couple of theirs okay and they do be smelling real strong like they're the type of perfume like if you spray it on yourself or your clothes when you wash it you still gonna smell it you still are going to smell it so this is fruity brown sugar girl okay and we're gonna spray Ooh. you can still smell it slightly on this card but it smells so damn good pergamon raspberry pear jasmine orange blossoms brown sugar okay this is what's all up in here okay listen if you love good perfumes but you don't like to spend good perfume prices you definitely want to try dossier okay try them what i tell you that you will not be pissed off you will not be disappointed girl try them mm. now this one oh this one fruity brown sugar this shit smells good like okay now if i had to choose between i don't know I love all four of them. I'm not like a huge fan of ambery saffron, okay? Because it's very lightweight. And even though it's lightweight, it reminds me of like, I, I would spray more just because. So, girl, I would definitely, you know what? I would definitely try fruity brown sugar. Like I definitely would try fruity brown sugar. But the citrus green apple has definitely got my heart. Like that one is a definite dupe to Dolce & Cabana's light blue for women. Like seriously, that's a definite for dupe for that. Now I've never smelled this one by E. Saint Laurent, the Moon Paris. But this one, inspired sensation, inspired sense, does smell delicious. It smells really, really good. So I would definitely suggest this one also. But if you want to try anything, I would definitely try Dossier's Speak Easy collection. They have so many different perfumes in their Speak Easy collection. And it's great when you see these companies come out with their own scents. Even though these inspired scents are they're also their own, they've been inspired by different things versus scents. So definitely check out Dossier. I will list everything down below for them, girl. Let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk you would like me to speak upon, girl, send me an email to Muffin is my lovers 20 12 at gmail.com make sure you put in the subject line real talk or you can go ahead and send one to april's real talk at gmail.com make sure to put in the subject line real talk if you want to go ahead and change the names of those people you've been talking about or yourself in the email you can do so let me know so but yeah girl we're gonna get into this real talk real quick okay
you guys. So we already know what time it is. It's real talk. So let's get into this. She has titled this. I love when people put like their little titles and stuff because I love I love stuff like that. Okay. I don't think it's safe being with her. This is what she's titled this. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hello, April. Hello, April. My name is Charlotte for this email. And I really feel like I'm in need of your advice or opinion like you would call it. I just hit the age of 29. I am a full out of the closet lesbian and so proud of it. I have been out of the closet for a little over three years. I can't say my family is 100% acceptant of it, but they do show love. My mother keeps hinting about grandchildren to me since I'm her only child, but this isn't about that. So my girlfriend is the same age as myself, but her lifestyle is totally different from mine. I work full time as a librarian and have been for the past six years. I love reading. I love books. So this was definitely the career path that I was heading. My girlfriend, however, she works at a local fast food joint. Along with that, she be slinging shit on the side and rolling with gang members. This isn't my lifestyle, and I am totally against what she does. It's not just the illegal bullshit that she slings, but it's also the fighting and hanging in the streets. She and I have been doing nothing but arguing and fighting for the last few months. I have given her ultimatums, either choose her lifestyle or me. She hasn't given me any response on that. Seems like she's trying to avoid it. We don't live together. I still live at home with my mom, and so does she. But when we are together, it's all good for a while. Then it's like hot boiling water. She constantly smokes weed around me, something which I'm against. Like, I'm not judging those who do smoke. I'm just not with any of it. I have tried to speak to her about going back to school, finding a better job, leaving the hood lifestyle alone, and all she does is argue with me and say, oh, not everyone is a bookworm goody two-shoe like you. April, I'm not sure if she really into me like that because she is not willing to change for me. She is not willing to become a better person for me. I'm tired of arguing and physically fighting. She has placed her hands on me a few times, and in return, I have put my hands right back on her. It's one thing to be a lesbian, but I'm not going to allow another woman to put hands on me, or a man for that. I love her. We've been together for a couple years, but she hasn't shown me no respect in my feelings towards our relationship, and I'm starting to feel like this is not worth my time. How do you make a person change? How do you make a person do the right thing so that your relationship can be a strong and better one? What do you think of all of this? Thank you so much, Charlotte. First of all, let's just say this. We're not about to change nobody, okay? We can't get in a relationship with people and feel like, you know what I'm saying, we're going to change them. That's that's not going to happen, okay? We would like for it to be happening. We would like to mold people to make them the exact way that we would want them to be. Because I know I would. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one out here that would like to mold people into making them the way we would want them to be, okay? If that was the case, wouldn't be no authentic people around no more, okay? But here we are. We got Charlotte and her girlfriend. They're 29 years old, okay? And I don't know if they both are. She said she's the same ages her so they've been together for a couple of few years i'm not really sure how long but it's toxic okay because ever since um they just they it's just toxic okay we got charlotte who's a librarian she loves reading and that's a career path and good for her kudos for her all right i ain't been in the library in a minute okay and then we got her girlfriend who works at a fast food joint and slings whatever she slings on the side and hangs out with the in, with the gang or gang people. I don't know. Okay, I ain't about to try to get myself um, unlive, unalived out here by talking about nobody's gangs. Okay, but I'm going to just tell you this. Now we got a librarian. Okay, and we got a gang member. All right, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, the two really don't go together at all. Now, I'm not really sure she was slinging whatever she was slinging before you and Char Charlotte and her got together, but it don't seem like a good mix. You know, it's like vinegar and water. They just don't mix, and it's the same thing here. It, it just don't go, okay? It just don't go. Like, girl, you're going to be reading books and, and helping people read books. Meanwhile, she helping people do shit that ain't got no business helping people do, all right? And I don't really know what she do, and honey, I'm not trying to be there and say what she do because I love my life and I like being alive, okay? Let's just say that. Now, if you feel like y'all been and arguing for the past few months and you want this girl to change and you feel like she's not changing so you think that she's not really into you because she's not changing she's her own person honey don't expect to be with somebody and make them change and be the person you want them to be that's not how it works now i'm not saying she's a bad person and i'm not saying she's a good person i don't know neither one of y'all all right straight up but i'm gonna just say this you need to do what's best for you if you don't like her lifestyle and you don't like how she is portraying her lifestyle to be then what you need to do is find someone that is more in your league okay and there's nothing wrong with that that's not a bad thing okay it's just that she, who knows where she's going to be in a few years from now. I'm not saying that working at a fast food joint is a bad thing neither because at least she's got a job, okay? Now, her side hustle is slinging stuff. I don't know if she could be slinging, um, slinging, a sling, a slingshot. I don't know, but I'm not really going to get too deep into that because that's not my business. And I'll be telling you, I'll be trying to mind my business. But I'm just here to say this about your relationship. Your relationship is really toxic. And I don't give a damn if it's man or female. You don't allow anybody to put their hands on you, okay? This is what we're not going to do. DV, it doesn't matter if it's a same-sex 
relationship or opposite sex relationship. You don't allow people to put their hands on you, girl. Where you been? Now I'm glad you put your hands back on her, but who has time to do that? Like let's let's just be for real. Life is short. Life is short. Okay. Some people live to be a hundred. Some people live to be a hundred and whatever. But in the end of the day, life is still short because this earth been here for a long time, longer than people live. And life is too short to allow anybody to be toxic towards you and allow anybody to put hands on you. I wish a motherfucker put the hands on me. Okay. Cause we'll have a fight. That's, that's the one thing I do not tolerate. All right. You're not about to be disrespectful to me in any type of relationship. I don't care if you married. I don't care if we've been together for 50,000 years. You are not about to put your hands on me because these hands do have reflexes and I bitch will slap back. Okay. And who has time to go through that on a daily or not even on a daily, but when y'all get together, who has time for toxic behavior? Like if y'all don't live together and then y'all see each other, when y'all see each other, when y'all see each other, it's like bullshit and toxic shit. And who has time for that? Like, let's be for real. Who the hell wants to be arguing if it's fighting with somebody on a daily or even when they see one another, like that shit is so old and played the fuck out. And like at the end of the day, everybody deserves somebody that's going to treat them with respect. Okay. Let's just say that. Now, as far as your family not being 100% supportive, I'm sorry about that. But at least they do show you love, like you said, but it's not about that. But maybe they don't show you love or they don't show you full acceptance of your choices. Maybe that's because the person that you're with. You ever think about that? Like Charlotte said, her family is not 100% acceptance. Maybe it's because of the choice that you decided to choose as your other side or your, your counterpart, your partner. Maybe it's the person you chose. Maybe that's why they're not so accepted. You ever thought about that? Like on some real shit, like they probably might be 100% acceptance. If you was to find someone that was totally in your league, was totally respectful, was perfect for you. And maybe that's when they would show 100% acceptance. But me personally, if that was my, if you were my daughter, and you was with someone who was in a toxic relationship, doesn't matter if it's same sex or opposite sex. I'm not going to show acceptance. I'm not. And maybe that's why your family isn't showing acceptance. Maybe you take that into consideration. You know what I'm saying? Like we all want the best for our kids. Who don't? It doesn't matter if it's same sex or opposite. We all want the best for our children. Okay. And I know me, if I had someone in my kid's life that wasn't perfect for them, wasn't good for them, I wouldn't be accepting either, you know? And some people might say, well, you got to give it a chance. You, you can't go off of what your family feels. Sometimes family knows best. Sometimes mother knows best. Father knows best. You know what I'm saying? Those people that have been here longer than you, we sometimes do know best. Okay, we might not know everything, but sometimes we do know best. Sometimes we can see more than what you see in a person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always had this thing like, okay, well, my ex would say, oh, he would be like, you, you always judging a person, but it's not that I judge a person, but he would just feel like, I would be too quick to judge a person, but I could see what he wasn't seeing. You understand what I'm saying? Like he would pick these friends and uh, mind you, one of his friends name was gutter. Who the fuck's friends name? Even if that's your nickname, I don't, I, that don't sound like a really good nickname. Okay. And that was his nickname gutter. Like whose nickname is gutter. What is the gutter is trash. Okay. So just from the name alone, I was like really skeptical about this person. But when I was introduced to him and he introduced me to him as gutter, Okay. I was just like, mm. and I knew from right then and there that it was going to be a problem. And I just felt what I felt. And I, and I knew this and he would always say like, I was too quick to judge a person, but my quickness made you open your eyes. And then later on, maybe a couple months down the line, you saw what I fuck I saw months prior. Okay. Even with this other dude named blade. Okay. What a fucking nickname blade. They blades cut you. Like I, I know nicknames are nicknames. Okay. But you know, sometimes I just go off for certain shit and I just be having these weird feelings about people. And I'm, and you know what though? I'll always be right. I'll always be right. So we, as older people, sometimes we see more than what you see of a person. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's a first come first map basis, you know how they say, don't judge a book by its cover. That can be true. And then that can't be true. Sometimes, sometimes you need to judge that motherfucker by its cover. Okay. Because it can save your goddamn life. Now your relationship is toxic. You want her to get a better job. You want her to go back to school. You want her to get out of the hood life. You want her to do the right thing. You want a lot of things from this young girl who don't really want none of that shit for herself. And when I say that you want more for her than she want for herself, it's because you saying that she's avoiding the topic, the topic of choosing between either the lifestyle or you honey you can't make a person choose the lifestyle or you you have to be the one to put your foot down and choose you either going to be there with the girl and her toxic behavior or you're going to be there on your own it is what it is period
okay? Now, me personally, I never could see a librarian with uh, a gang member. But you know what? E e pe people's career choices is their career choices. Doesn't mean that that's them as a person. But what I, am here, what I am here to tell you, Charlotte, is this. She might just be into you, but this is her lifestyle. And you have to make better choices for yourself. Now, I'm, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be with somebody who's constantly arguing with me, constantly being toxic with me, don't really want to put no effort forward. Because when I elevate, I want you to do the same thing. And if you just staying right here, then we're not elevating nowhere. We're kind of being stagnant. And I don't I don't want a person who just want to be stagnant. I need you to have a little oomph, okay? You know what I'm saying? And you still young. You're 29 years old. Let me tell you something. The lifestyle that she lived is not your lifestyle. Don't try to include yourself in the shit. Don't try to make that shit a part of your lifestyle. Because when I tell you it's not worthy and it's not worth it, it's not motherfucking worth it. Okay? Because I'm here to tell you, I've, I'm, I'm born and raised in New York, New York City. And I've done things in my life that I can say I'm not too proud of either. Okay? But part of being a part of the streets, I was part of the streets too. All right? And that part of my life, I'm not really that proud to, to talk about. I'm not really part. I'm not really that proud of it. You know what I'm saying? But I was born and raised in New York. I, I lived in projects my whole entire life you know what i'm saying and some of that lifestyle that i had to live and endure just to get ahead is something that i really don't want like i wouldn't wish anything on another person you know what i'm saying like that shit is whack people slinging drugs or whatever is whack that shit is corny okay that shit is corny and i hate to see people do things that will lower their life expectancy and for you sweetheart being in this toxic like to being in this toxic relationship with your girlfriend is not like the expectancy that your family is wanting for you so if they're not so accepting they maybe not be so accepting because of who you chose but you don't seem to think about it like that you probably just feel like oh because you're a lesbian they don't be accepting of it no bitch it's because who you chose i guarantee you it's probably because if they showing you love still because you're one because of your, your your sexual preference then that means that the person that you chose is not who they are accepting on and i don't know about you but if i had kids and you didn't say you did have any kids so i'm pretty sure you don't but if i had kids which i do i wouldn't be accepting to anybody toxic in their life i don't give a fuck if it was their lover their friend their sibling their cousin their boss their co-worker if they toxic to them in their life then i'm definitely gonna not be accepting of it and i'm gonna have a couple of words for them so maybe you should choose better okay don't wait on somebody else to change Listen, let me tell you something. We cannot change a person for who they are. You have to either accept them for who they are or leave them the fuck alone, okay? And I made that choice in my life, and I feel like you need to make the same choice in your life. We can't change people, and that's just, it is what it is. It's unfortunate because men, older men will get with younger women and feel like they can change them, and they can mold them into who they want them to be. Yeah, that might work sometimes, okay? Older women do it to younger guys, too. It might work sometimes, but why do you want to change a person? You get with a person to change them. You got you. You get with a person. You accept them for who they are. That's genuine love. So if you are with somebody and you feel like they have all these negatives, and you want them to change, that means that person is not for you. Regardless of how much you love them, love is a strong thing. But regardless, if you can't accept them for who they are, then that person is not for you. She is not, just because she's not trying to change for you, that doesn't mean she don't love you, but that's just who she is. Now you got with her when she was like that, and so you could either deal with it or you can move along your way. No librarian, pick up one of those books and read about people, about change, about acceptance, okay? Read one of those books. But this person is who she is and she's not going to change until she's ready to fucking change. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking her because I don't know her and I really don't try to judge people. But that's saying, like I said, don't you never judge a book by its cover. That's that's not true sometimes because sometimes you can see somebody and they could be having pistols up in their hand and, and all type of shit going on. You bitch, you better judge them. OK, you better judge them. So sometimes you need to judge a book by its cover because that cover is is like screaming at you like this is who the fuck I am now. Toxic or not. I'm not about to argue with nobody every fucking day or every time that we get together. And she didn't say, Charlotte didn't say she'd been arguing with this person for months now. And they had not tried to change. They have avoided the situation. They avoided the conversation. Now, look, I am not one to break up a happy home or a happy relationship or break off anybody's relationship because that's not what I do. I, I like for you to think for yourself and feel for yourself and just read the comments and take advice. You don't even have to take advice, but just take my opinion, okay? Because this is my opinion. I don't I don't never want to break up anybody. I don't never want to disturb anybody's happy home because that's not what I'm here for. But it don't seem too fucking happy. If your family's not acceptance of it and you saying that y'all do nothing but argue, okay, then girl, move on. Charlotte. There's nothing wrong 
we're leaving things where they are and moving forward in life. There's nothing wrong with that. Just because you love a person doesn't mean you have to stay with them, especially if it's not good for you, especially if it's not good for your mental health, especially if it's not good for your physical health. It's nothing wrong with walking away. Don't ever feel like you gave up. Don't ever feel like you defeated. Sometimes we have to walk away because it's for our betterment. Sometimes we have to walk away because if we don't, we're going to be stuck in that rut with that same person. If we don't walk away, sometimes we are blocking our blessings. And I say this to y'all all the time. Stop blocking your blessings because you never know what God has out there set for you. And some people may not believe in God, Jesus Christ, but I'm telling you, when you with somebody that's negative and toxic, you are blocking your blessings because you stay with that person and all you keep getting is negative and negative and negative. When there could be somebody that's genuine and perfect and right for you out there, but you'll never know because you're with that negative person. And like I said, I'm never here to stop anybody from being with another person or interrupting anybody's happy home. But I just feel like if you toxic, then there's nothing happy about that. If your family is not too accept acceptance on that person, there's a reason for it. It might not be, sometimes the reasons might not be valid, but I just feel like for this particular reason, it's because of the person that you chose, Charlotte. And that is what it is. But we need to learn how to walk away from certain situations. Like I understand that you love a person and your heart will mend within due time. It definitely will. Trust me when I tell you, it definitely will because I was that same person who didn't want to let go of someone that I really truly love but I had to realize you is nothing but toxic and without you my life has become so much better and I'm not saying anything bad or bashing you but I just feel like my life has smooth sailing now and I'm just so much happier okay because I'm away from the toxic shit and I had to learn that after a while okay but it's nothing wrong with walking away it's nothing wrong with telling someone you know what i gave it my try i gave it a try and this is not for me it's nothing wrong with saying no okay it's nothing wrong with it especially if it's going to elevate you and it's going to make your life better I honestly would ask my family members who are not 100 acceptance what is it that is not accept what what is it that makes them not be 100 acceptance of this relationship that i'm in because i would want to know you know what i'm saying if you don't really care about knowing about why your family is not so acceptance of this relationship, Charlotte, then don't find out. But I would definitely ask why they're not so acceptance. And I guarantee you it will be the reasons because of the person you chose. Because you already said they'd be showing love, but they just not 100% on board with your lifestyle. Might not just be your lifestyle, might be the person you chose to put in your lifestyle. Okay? Just walk away. There's nothing wrong with walking away. Listen. If that's not your lifestyle, what your girlfriend does, it has nothing to do with working at a fast food joint because people got to start somewhere. Ain't nothing wrong with having a job at a fast food joint. Every It's a job, okay? It's a job, and that's what matters. However, the other part is not what's up. You know what I'm saying? I don't condone any type of violence or any type of negative living. I don't, you know. I do get that some people have to do what they have to do to survive. I get that. But then there comes a cost with it. And you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you just got to walk away from certain shit and just try harder at doing something else to survive. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? I've learned that the hard way. I'm not saying that my whole life I've been... Um, a, a goody good good two shoe no because i damn sure haven't and i damn sure ain't a goody good two shoe now but i just think like a certain time in your life you need to put your best foot forward and try to be the better version of yourself and allow goodness and, and positivity in your life and stop letting all the negative shit in your life a lot of people like to thrive off of drama and shit and i trust me i love drama sometimes too it's great to watch it but to be a part of it i don't want to be a part of nobody's drama i don't i just really don't and so with that being said charlotte i really feel like you need to sit down with your family and ask them why they're not totally acceptance with your lifestyle and then also ask yourself, is it really worth losing your career or your mental well-being over a person when there are so many different persons out there that will fit the category of that what you need in your life versus having to sit there and fix them and make them into a person that you want? Girl, that's too much fucking work. I'm not about to try to change someone, okay? If you don't want to do better for yourself, then you cannot do better with me or you can't do bad with me or any of that bullshit. You know, you could do bad by yourself and you could do better by yourself too. But if I'm not about, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to try to sit here and change a person and, and fix a person. I'm not doing that. Okay. I don't got my license to do that. Okay. I don't got the right tools to do that. And I'm just, I don't got the mentality or the time to do that. I'm trying to find the perfect, perfect person for me. Now ain't nobody perfect, but there's people that are perfect for you. Okay. That match with you, that, that inclined with you. And this young lady that's slinging and gang membership is not for you. Stop trying to change a person because you love them. Sometimes you just got to let them go and love them from afar.
Let Charlotte know how y'all feel about it. Now, I got one more, okay? And so, I don't really know if this is, like, a real talk. I mean, like, she she put it as such. So, I, I would think it is, right? She labeled it as a real talk. So, I mean, that means she wants my opinion. Okay. She called, she said, dating in her 40s. Hey, April, how are you? Hello, everyone. Divas and Devos. Sis, I have been a follower since your New York days. And I must say, I'm so happy you are still doing YouTube. Thank you, girl. What else is there to do? There are not as many originals left, and I respect your hustle. I be trying. My name is Lana. I don't know if her name is Lana or Lena. I do apologize in advance if I am pronouncing your name incorrect, but y'all already know I will botch a fucking name up. But I'm going to call you Lana. My name is Lana, and I am in my late 40s, still out here dating. And need I say, the dating game is not the same. Men my age seem so hard to date. They are either last minute with things, meaning they will text you last minute to see what your plans are that evening. Wanting to hook up after a dinner date, wanting to have you meet their family on the second day. Some of them I have met in these dating apps and they are nothing like their profile. When I say they're nothing like their profile, I mean, when I meet up with them, they are looking older than their photos. Their clothing is super tight. They seem like they still want to hang with the younger crowd. Sis, it's getting bad out here. Any suggestions, please help a sister out. I feel like I'm not doing something right. Thanks, Lana. So I don't know why you want my, su my suggestions for dating. Because, honey, I've been single for almost four years in October. When I tell you I'm at my happiest point in life, I'm at my motherfucking happiest point. I'm not looking for no man. And But I will say this about those dating apps, okay? Be very careful, okay? Because I don't I don't know. I'm, I'm old school. I'm old school. I'm going to either meet you organically or I'm not going to meet you at all. And these dating apps, yes, they do use old pictures. Yes, when you meet them in person, they are not what you would, would, would the profile has made them out to be so that's one reason why i don't go on these dating apps and i just be finding like these dating apps be to me in my opinion they just be too much like i'm i'm just not into those dating apps i don't know it's i girl listen i understand that people meet people that way nowadays but am i old school old school to where i really would like the person i would really like to meet the person organically like in real life like out and about in public am i asking for too much with that maybe i am and maybe that's why i'm still single to this day because because i don't rely on these dating apps but i just you know what i just don't i can't spy i just can't put myself out like that out there like that for on a dating app i just really can't like you know like when i was growing up and i know yeah that was back in the day we didn't have all of this so i still rely on meeting people the organic way you understand what i'm saying like i don't want to go on an app and scroll looking for a man like i just really can't do that and trust me when i tell you i have i have done it like god i've been here for 10 years so I think like my first year here, I tried, I tried it out and it just really wasn't for me. Like there was like some weirdos. There's some weirdos on there. Okay. There, there be just weirdos in real life too. But what are you doing? Are you, she said, I feel like she's not doing something right. Girl, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not like a, a marriage counselor. I'm not like a, the love maker or what do you call that? Like the matchmaker. I'm definitely not a matchmaker. Uh, I do like to watch Kendra G on here though. I do like to watch her show, but I stopped watching it for a while because some people on there just become a little bit too much, but I do like to watch her show. Now she has made some really great matches and maybe you should try her YouTube channel out because she be making some good matches, but you know why I stopped watching it? People can be so mean in the comments. In the comment section, people could be really, really mean. They always talk about people's weight. They talk about people's looks. And it could be so mean. And I just felt like, wow, these people that go on her show are very brave. And I, when I say they are very fucking brave, they are brave because to read the comments, the way they talk, the way the commenters talk about the people that appear on the show is just so wicked like it's just so wicked and so that's a, that's one reason why i stopped watching is because if people are just so mean people can be really really mean but as far as finding a man girl yes i agree with you on on some of these uh mentions that you didn't said about men wearing tight pants and or she just said tight clothing okay yeah now i i will admit i have seen men my age and i will say this i will not i would not not date any man that wore tight ass skinny jeans i'm just not I'm not going to date any man, okay? I wouldn't give any man my phone number who wore a pair of tight-ass skinny jeans. I'm just not. Mm -mm. Nope. Can't do it. No way. No, 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 no. And I don't know. Maybe I'm too picky, but I did meet some guy out in the parking lot one day of fries, okay? Now, it was weird because I was coming to my car and he was going in the store. He was waiting. So, you know, it was a black gentleman. 
he asked me, he said, excuse me, miss, excuse me, um, ma'am, I know this sounds weird, but do you have any lotion? So this was his pickup line to me. And I actually did have a bottle of lotion in my car. And he actually didn't need that shit, okay, because he was ashy. So, we you know, we stood there and talked, and he spoke. And then he was, you know, he said, you know, you're really beautiful. Now, mind you, that day, I just had two cornrows, no makeup. And, you know, that's how I go out and appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, we exchanged phone numbers. Now, he had, he had an old school name. His name was Jermaine, old school name. Now, mind you. Um, I started feeling like he was very lazy. Now, whenever he would text me, like, I don't know, but this, this generation, and, and he was my age, he, he just seemed kind of silly to me because he would like to text all the time. And I'm, I'm like, you want to, I'm, I'm very verbal person. We can talk over the phone. I'm not going to go back and forth text with you. But he started seeming lazy to me. And I did say that to him. I did say that to him. I said, you sleep a lot. Cause he's like, oh, I was sleeping. I was sleeping. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. You sleep a lot. You sleep a lot is what I said. I said, you, you, you don't have a job. Where do you live? This was me. Oh, he lives with his sister. I was like, oh, you don't have a job? Said he was sick. He's like, girl, all I know is this. He was not for me. And I definitely stopped answering his messages. And then he did start calling and I stopped answering that. I didn't answer that either. Until finally one day he said to me in a message that something that I did wrong. And I had to let him know. I felt like you were lazy. You're always sleeping. You don't have anything really going for yourself. Now I might've been wrong for saying that, but that's just how I felt. Like you're in your forties and all you're doing is sleeping on your sister's couch. And you, yeah, definitely wasn't for me. Try to say he had COVID and all of this. Like, girl, bye. I don't have time for it. But I don't know. The dating game in this world has changed a lot. It's not the same. I don't really know about these apps. Um, what is her name? She, Lana. I don't really know too much about these dating apps, Lana, because I listen, if I'm going to meet somebody, it's going to be organically and it is what it is or else I'm not going to meet you. Now, maybe I need to um, beef up my expectations a little bit more or upgrade my standards and, and go for an app. But until then, I'm not fucking with no dating apps. That's just not me. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person out there in this world that feels that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you do meet these men online and women, they are not anything like their profile or their photos. I can't say that for everybody, but I've heard horror stories. I've seen horror stories. So I'm very aware that, yes, yeah, sometimes you may get a good one. Sometimes you may not. You got, you know, it's like fishing. You got to throw it back in and try again. Listen, I just feel like this. I really can't give you no suggestions on dating because I'm not dating. I just feel like for me, myself, when the time comes, it's going to come along and I'm going to know it's my time. And that's until then, I'm, I'm happy in my life. You know what I'm saying? My expectations for people may be too high for what I want. And maybe that's the reason why I'm still single, you know. But I will say this. Yes, people do not represent themselves like they should at times. Um, yeah. Sometimes those dating apps can be very misleading. It's like getting this ponytail. You know, you you look, you seen the ponytail on Amazon. When you got that shit, it was not what you expected. It's the same shit. It's very misleading. That's a lot of times why I don't mess with those apps. It's because they're just very misleading. And I don't and people are misleading. You know what I'm saying? I don't like a misleading person. And for me, like I don't like she said they will what message you at the last minute. Yeah, I'm the type of person we have to have things planned out. You're not about to ask me what the fuck I'm doing and expect me to get my together for you at the last minute and what did she say she said oh they like to hook up with you they like to get some on their second date okay first of all wanting to have okay wanting to hook up after a dinner date yeah no see first of all we not I don't give a fuck if you paid for my meal or not we not hooking up you're not coming to my house I'm not allowing you to meet my family you're not coming where I live you're not knowing where I fuck I live at on after no first date sweetheart you gonna have to get to know me better and to meet your family after the second date she said yeah no we're not doing that I'm not about to go meet your family we're not reeling we're not going to any barbecues, any family reunions. I'm not doing any of that at the second date. No, mm -mm. you're not. No, my expectations of people are not. No, the, the, the part that just got me is she said their clothing is super tight and they like to hang out with the younger crowd. So you know what? To me, that's that's a huge turn off. And I'm sorry, but when I see a man, when I see a man out who's my age and he's got himself together with his salt and pepper and he's 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 looking manly and he's he's got you know he's got himself together that's an attraction but when I see a man that's my age and he's trying to be like with the young trending teens or he's got these super tight clothes on I just don't find that attractive at all I don't I'm sorry but I, I'm not saying your pants got to be sagging please don't have your pants sagging please let's not do the pants sagging because that's a definite turn off we're not gonna do sagging pants but we're not gonna do too tight clothing I don't know I might just be too picky um Lana to be asking me you have to ask the ladies in the 
comments i'm pretty sure the divas and the divas could give you some type of suggestions in the comments but for me as a single woman who loves being single i don't think that i'm your right um suggestion on as person you know what i'm saying fuck around with me you might be stay single <laughs> okay but then again you might find mr perfect for you because there are expectations and standards and listen you have to have a job you got to live on your own you have to bring something to the table and it ain't just motherfucking groceries with me okay and some people might feel like well my expectations are going to keep me single but my expectations may keep me single but it's also going to keep me freaking happy too because i'm not going to allow just anybody into my life okay and with that being said i'm not going to put i'm not going to fix the person this ain't build the bear over this motherfucker here all right we're not going to go for oh well because he ain't got those type of jeans on let me just fix them up not nah, sweetheart we're not doing all of that our expectations of a person are much more than what they used to be back in the day so that's another reason why i'm still single because what i expected back then is not what i expect now now lana maybe you on the wrong app but I, I've, I've heard that even those Christian apps are still not even, they full of shit too, okay? So I really can't say. I just feel like meeting people organically is the best way, but it might not be the way that people are doing it this day and age, but for me, it is what it is. And for you to con constantly go on dating apps, maybe not what is best for you. It may be not working out in your favor. And sometimes we have to take a look at what we've been doing and try to do something different. You understand what I'm saying? So what you've been doing, maybe not just working out for you, like using the apps. Maybe that's not your go-to. Maybe that's not working out for you. Therefore, you need to try something different. And maybe trying something different is meeting people in different places, meeting them organically, you know what I'm saying? Trying your hand at other things. But I hope that was enough opinion or suggestion for you. But I do agree with some of the things that you've said in this conversation that we're having. Yeah. But you know what? Some men like wearing tight pants and some women love men in tight clothing. I'm not one of them and you're not either. I can't say that we all are. I love to know the opinions of you guys, women, in the comments. What do you think of men wearing tight jeans or tight clothing? What is your opinion? I want to know. I really want to know. Let me know what y'all what y'all thoughts are on any man wearing tight clothing, skinny jeans. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like... Maybe I'm too old school and I got to beef it up a little bit. I don't know, but you know, it is what it is. But anyway, you guys, I think I took enough of y'all time up. I'm going to go. Okay. It's Memorial Day. I'm going to make me a sandwich, a sandwich because I'm hungry and I haven't eaten today. And it is now three o'clock, but it's almost three o'clock. It is 2.50. So I'm hungry. And yes, I'm hungry, girl. But I love y'all. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure y'all come to this Saturday's baby shower, virtual baby shower. I will link the baby registry down below. I love you all, and I will see y'all in the next one.